said, I quote, what went wrong in Uganda was that budgetary discipline was lacking and those who advocated the monetary approach to the management of the economy depended on the market mechanism to orient the economy towards more production and less consumption. So NRM is criticizing a market economy in their first budget speech. Then they add, the situation was made worse by the financial program approved by the government and supported by the International Monetary Fund. So NRM disassociated everything which had occurred before. Blamed the UPC for coming up with programs and the support of the international organizations. On the issue of embracing a market economy, they went further to say they therefore decided that the exchange rate be fixed at $1,400 for 1,400 shillings per US dollar with immediate effect um, and also went on to say that dual exchange rate was abolished. Before I dwell into this one, I need to take you back. UPC, when elected in 1980, embraced um, a mixed economy, embraced market mechanism, and did carry out a dual exchange rate initially. But on the budget speech given on the 15th of June 1994, and I'll read it verbatim. And this is, okay, this is the president who was the Minister of Finance at the time said, I propose that the dual exchange rate be unified at 15, or on 15th June 1984 at a rate to be struck at the auction on that day. Meaning, those who are bidding for the dollars, it was going to be the market which will determine from June 1984. People came up to the bush in 1986, fixed the exchange rate. Today, they're behaving like the fathers and mothers of liberal market economy. That is nonsense. It's a lie. UPC, which has been criticized, the record show. Ahead of its time, and embraced the market economy. But liberalization under UPC is a very different concept from the one under NRM. Liberalization under UPC was to open up to other competitors but does not remove the hand of government or the government institutions or supported institutions which were working to benefit the citizens of Uganda. Under UPC, there is no way you could have ever sold Uganda Commercial Bank. That was a people's bank, built by the people, by their produce, which was marketed by the marketing boards. Recently, I went with my committee of national economy to Mombasa to look at what is under Uganda property holdings. And people are surprised that the lead marketing board, the coffee marketing board, produce marketing board have warehouses in Mombasa. They have commercial buildings on the main street of Mombasa. They have residential buildings for the senior staff who are working to move Uganda's products out of Uganda into the world market. If you say the produce marketing boards and those systems are not working, how do you acquire property? With what? It makes sense. And that is why UPC at the time could tell farmers, produce, the market will be found. Nalukulongo. Those stores there, which is now under um, World Food Program, and Aponye, those were produce marketing board stores where the produce from Uganda from all over was being collected and moved by rail to the port to get to the external market. The marketing boards also have property in London. London was the main center for where Uganda's products were being sold. You can see the output of the production. So I want to put it on record here that all these nonsense about market economy, people saying that they were planning how to get people to earn, the common man to earn, for me it is absolutely wrong and I want it to be clear. Independence is an important day. And independence was what gave birth to many of these things which we talk about. In UPC we, 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 we treasure. 
because everything that was done was done to benefit the citizens of Uganda. Recently, I've been seeing the household census, and I cringe. Some of those statistics are scary. You look at the statistics of how many people are finishing primary education, how many are finishing secondary education. But our education system is no longer preparing our children to meet the challenges which they face in this in the land of today. Parents are struggling left, right, and center for to educate their children. They're losing everything in that process. But the system does not treasure the city of Uganda. The economy of Uganda was supposed to benefit the citizens of Uganda, not the citizens to benefit the economy. These days people talk about money, 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 but where is the money coming? Is it working for the citizens? We boast about fish exports, but around the fishing communities, all around the lake, they are finding malnutrition because people can no longer afford the cheapest protein, which was fish. The fish is now for export, not for the citizens of Uganda, not the children of Uganda. This, to me, is where we draw the line and make it clear that 2026 is not going to be business as usual. 2026 is going to be a serious conversation about the future of the citizens of Uganda. What benefits them? How can we raise the standards? How can we improve on what was done? Not to misrepresent history, but to organize ourselves to be the determinant of the future of the citizens of Uganda. So, warning is out that this revision of history is not going to start. And I'll urge all of you members of the press, the first program which you can call a real program which the NRN produced was known as the Rehabilitation and Development Plan. But I can tell you, and without any fear of contradiction anywhere, that first program released was the revised recovery program, which was to be issued in September of 1985. UPC didn't have the chance to issue it because we were overthrown. If you look at the wording of the project profiles, if you look at all the work to be done, and you compare it with the UPC recovery program, it is called absolute preservation. I don't know what they call it these days when somebody uh, but I think there are people who have never bothered to really look at the detail. But I promise, as we go to 2026, all of these things will be laid there. And let us, as Ugandans, have a serious conversation of where we're going, where we want to be, and what potential we have. I have complete faith that the people of Uganda can manage. I have complete faith that we are blessed as a country. God has blessed us with one of the best climates ever. We should not be in a situation of food insecurity. We should not be in a situation whereby we are not able to meet the needs of our people. And many of our professionals recently were celebrating Teacher's Day, but the teachers are not happy. And the teachers play a very, very important role in shaping the destiny of our country. They must be central in our planning, in our organization, as we prepare to take Uganda into the future. Our health services, we have brilliant health professionals. But the motivation, the support, the tools with which to work with is not befitting of somebody who has gone through the process to achieve so much. Let us honor them because they play a very important role in our society. So, as we head to independence, let's reflect from where we came from. What was the dream of independence? Is that all citizens of Uganda can enjoy and share in this wonderful country God blessed us with. Let us honor that dream and work for the citizens of Uganda. I say all of this for God and my country. Causes one to be able to filter and know what to say, when to say, and where to say it. But obviously, we have different 
understanding and appreciation. But I'm quite sure um, that is going to clean up the mess. I'm sure there's a lot going on behind the scenes to clean it up. But we need to be serious about how we handle matters of great importance, diplomatic and also issues of governance. There must be a level of sobriety in handling it. There must also be some level of predictability and organization of how certain things are done. I for the position of the sovereign member of parliament, and we're going to go through a process of um, coming up with one candidate who the party can back. So that is going to be an interaction. And um, the determination of the candidate, it is actually with the leaders on the ground in the solo. And it's in our role to support them in the decision of the way. But at this moment, UBC has two candidates who want to fight for the position, the vacant uh, position of the party. We're in the process of dealing with them because we had to hear the expression of interest. So now that you know we have two um, aspiring, then now we're going to see how we're going to filter and see whether we can develop consensus or we're going to go through a process. All of that is left to be determined by the leadership of the government. The very fact that we've gone through several programs trying to do the same thing time and time again by coming up with the same results is a clear indication that the program is not working. Um, it is hard to imagine that by putting, throwing money at every problem, you're going to get a solution. You also need to appreciate where people are at that material time. If I'm holding money and my children are not going to school, what am I likely to do? You pay the fees. And you try to solve issues later. So programs need to be geared around the specific activities or production lines which then the money goes to the producer and they're able to, to earn a decent degree. So I don't expect, well, uh, what's it called, PDM, the latest one, which is another incarnation after OWC. The one before OWC was Bonaba uh, Gagawale, and then you keep going back to Antarctica and PAP and all, all these programs. But I don't expect it to work, and that is obviously going to be something we're going to talk about in the 2026 campaign. That this is a program, what has it done? How has it changed the lives of the citizens of Uganda, and how best can we do so? So that is going to be an open matter for discussion, but I do not have faith that that program is well thought out, organized, and geared towards uplifting the citizens of Uganda. The backbone, and so through. Um, through agriculture that you're able to get people educated and get different skills. So, in my case, my grandparents were cotton farmers. And it's cotton which educated my father. So, the basis from the agriculture side has been uh, across the board. Very many people who are able to succeed, it was on the background of agriculture and supporting those who are producing. Now, the cooperatives were there to support their members to produce. The marketing board was to help get the product from the farmer and get it out um, to the market, to the market over there. And therefore, there was an active attempt by these institutions, which you will not say were co completely governed because it was owned by the, the, the cooperatives, which were members' uh, organization, to get our exports out. So we still need to look at what do we have, where do we have an advantage? How can, what we can produce and how we can access those markets. But at the same time, we need to be training our manpower in a way whereby that manpower will be able to handle different aspects of living. The more we develop, you need more specialization at different fields. And therefore, there will have to be some level of disconnect. But still, there's a huge percentage of Ugandans which still rely on agriculture, and therefore we must find ways of how we can deal with it and help it um, become strong. I mean, there are people who have said that the cooperatives are largely destroyed because the background of um, association with UPC, but there's been nothing which has replaced them. All these attempts which he was raising, all these programs, um, then you're having circles which are not clearly defined to try and replace what role the cooperatives play in helping the production. So Uganda is blessed, but we now have to access those blessings in order to be able to um, gain an advantage in regional and international markets. At the same time, we need to develop our manpower according to the needs for the future.
Do you think uh, rationalization of this option? Uganda already as it is has a bloated system. Even if I take back to the ministries, we have too many ministries. We have a huge um, governance. I mean, how many advisors are there? There are hundreds of advisors. There are hundreds of people with all sorts of positions. But we need to look at what really works for the citizens. Not to have a bloated um, government structure which does not deliver. If it was delivering and delivering in an efficient way whereby we can see the benefits, it's a different question. Now, yes, you're trying to cut losses, but we're still very far from um, where you can actually say that our public expenditure is befitting for economy our size and is working for the citizens of Uganda. Yes, we have come out of the, the census and the community of democracy which will um, have to explain a reduction in population. It, 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 it does not add up, it does not make sense. And therefore, it's right to question that, was this money well spent? If um, there are such glaring mistakes in, the, in what was the outcome was. But obviously, you may also look at it that there were attempts to manipulate the population figures. And that one will be looked at in preparation of um, rigging the 2026 election in advance. So you, you don't put anything aside from um, people who will do all sorts of schemes to maintain power. But um, we should actually have the right information in order to be able to plan effectively. You must really know what is there. You must know what your population is, um, what condition they're living in, in order to be able to come up with a proper effective plan which can enhance the quality of life which the citizens have. So if you have poor input data, the output will also be just as poor. You will not be able to come up with something effective and you will not be able to cater for all those who needed to be catered for. Because whichever plans are going to be devised for uh, the future of the The facts show is something totally different. Now, when you look at the 80s, um, throughout the period of the 80s, the average per capita income during that period was just below $300. But you look at the conditions whereby you do not have people who are earning multi-billion or multi-millions of dollars. That reflected what the common man had in the pocket. What the common man was able to access from the sale of whether it is cotton, coffee, or whatever produce. Now, to put it in context, you say figures don't lie. Many of us here parents, how much does it cost to educate a child today? Now, Uganda government allocates 20,000 shillings in the budget per child in primary. One child, 20,000 for one year. And it's not guaranteed that because there's 20,000 in the budget, it is going to be released and reach that child. If you're saying we have these multi-billions, but the child of Uganda, the future of Uganda, you only allocate 20,000 out of those billions? Who are you working for? When Pinati talks, money is there. But this child, the child, a Ugandan child born in a village of Uganda, 20,000 shillings per year. Is that a correct economy? Is that justice? Are you doing justice? We need to improve our child's future and we are giving them 20,000. Now, you said about figures. I read this issue where they said the exchange rate was fixed at 1,400. Mark you now, you removed the two zeros to come to today's currency. So effectively, the dollar was 14 shillings in 1986. Today it's how much? 3,000? Put your 3,700, divide by 14, give it 200 and something. For percentage, you put 100, multiply by 100. So the shilling of today hmm, has depreciated by over 20 thousand percent from the shilling of 1986. You want figures of 86? 
it has depreciated by over 20,000 percent depreciation. Is that not a figure? You say figures don't lie. That's a figure. The dollar today to the 14 shillings where they show themselves to pack. What is the depreciation? So if you had your wealth in shillings, you are poor. And there are many people who are able to manage their lives, able to raise their children, able to educate their children, who cannot do so today. Those are the ones I'm fighting justice for. That let every child have an opportunity in Uganda. Let every Uganda have an opportunity to succeed. And there were systems put in place to look for those bright children, to give them opportunities to be able to succeed. The education system was built around the issue of developing our manpower for the benefit of Uganda. And that's what I'll start with. So I will defend my record, and the figures also don't lie. Depreciation of over 27,000%. That's the reality. Let them quote that figure. 